And so continuing on what Aaron was covering, uh, what we've done is create an application that addresses the problem of malicious fi files in your cloud storage with a focus on ease of use. Uh, we want to make it as simple as possible to ensure that your files are free of malware. So our product's called Antivirus for Amazon S3. Uh, it's an all-in-one solution for monitoring and protecting your buckets. It enables you to quickly and easily ensure that all of your files are virus-free with minimal hassle and complication. Uh, the way this works is when you deploy the product into your AWS account, it stands up a console, which is what you're seeing here, that has all of the required permissions in order to protect your buckets from malware. It only takes, like Aaron was saying, a couple minutes to deploy the console and have your, your buckets protected with scanning agents up and running. So when you visit the console web application, this landing page you see is kind of a summary dashboard. It gives you an overall status view into your object protection with details such as the problem files and data scan statistics. Like up here, you see the total data scanned in the lifetime, total object scan, et cetera. And some charts just giving breakdowns of uh, time frame based information. Now this sort of information would be, would be difficult to acquire if using a product that simply had virus scanning agents without the centralized console. And so we find the information to be very useful for quickly understanding the status and risk of your data that's being stored in uh, your S3 buckets. So if we jump over to the bucket protection page here, we'll go ahead and see how this works. Uh, so we have a summary table showing all the buckets that are accessible by this console, including whether or not protections turned on or off, as you see on the protection status side here. So let's scroll down and look at US East 1. Uh, you can see that we have all but two of them are turned on. So let's go ahead and turn on these two buckets. So I've set up one called CSS Webinar Existing Files, and there's already some files in there. So I'll go ahead and turn that on, and it's going to prompt us to see if we want to scan the existing files in there. And we'll say, yeah, go ahead and do that. And we'll say scan selected. We'll get a little message saying it's going to crawl the buckets, and it finished it. There's about 20 or so files in there, but it does scan, uh, crawl the buckets very quickly. And that will spin up an agent, uh, particularly just for those files, and get those scanned. And then we have this new files bucket that I made that's just empty. And we'll go ahead and turn that one on. And we'll say don't scan. So when you turn on protection for a bucket, what happens in the background is that console is doing all the work required in order to make sure files put in that bucket uh, can be scanned automatically. So that includes setup such as standing up scanning agents uh, and adding events to the S3 bucket in order for new files to go into a message queue. And then our scanning agents work off that queue in order to process the files for malware and they'll report back the status. So if we hop over to the S3 management console here, uh, you'll see that I am looking at the new files bucket and we'll go ahead and drop some stuff in here. Find that, hold on. Okay, so I just dropped a bunch of files in there. Upload those. And so scanning for malware happens very quickly and it's actually, you know, shortly after this is done uploading, these will be done. And it looks like, yeah, I had one test virus file in there and it's already gone. So what happens is the default settings to have infected files move to a quarantine bucket. Um, you can also configure that to have them left here or have them deleted. And for every file that's scanned, we can look at the properties of the object. So pull the picture here and go to the properties and we can see that this gets tagged. And so on the tags, it says a scan result, which is clean and the date scan, which was now. And so very quickly it scanned all those files I just dropped in. And if we go back to the console, we can see here on the problem files page, if I switch over to the one hour view, there's that virus file I dropped in there. It's already been identified and reported in an easy to find location. And so it's easy to see what activity has been happening in your buckets that can put you at risk. So we know it found this file. And if we open that up, we can see that it's in this quarantine bucket. So if you ever, if it, if you ever needed to get that file back or wanted to look more into it, you can go look in that quarantine bucket and go see the file there. You can go clean out your quarantine bucket if you want to, et cetera. 
we'll hop back to the dashboard, give these charts a moment to refresh here, and jump back to the one hour view. And it's a little condensed because I wasn't scanning anything till now, but you can see that the, uh, the files that we just did are already reported here. So there's those 10 files that I just dropped in, already reported. So it gives a near real-time view of the activity that's going on with your agents. Uh, another thing that's really convenient with the single console deployment like this is you're able to link as many AWS accounts as you need. And as you see up here, I have three. And then there's one inactive. So if you have 100 accounts in your, in your AWS organization, you could link some or all of them and be able to use the single console deployment to protect all of those buckets from malware. So if we hop over to uh, the linked accounts configuration page, um, you can see we get a summary of the accounts that I have linked, right? So we have our primary, which is the one the console's deployed in. Uh, it's called primary, but you can, you can rename it to whatever you want. And then you get a bucket count in each of those accounts. And so we have primary production and testing are active, and we get a bucket count there. So I put two in production and zero in testing. Uh, this development one says NA because it's inactive. So we actually haven't uh, completed the linking process on that one yet. And so you're able to add as many accounts as you want there. And over in the bug protection page, you can see here that it's called out by that nickname. Um, so it's a convenient name to be able to identify it elsewhere in an application and know exactly where that lives. And so on top of uh, what we've seen here so far, uh, we're currently in the process of adding other major new features such as sophisticated groups and access management. Uh, so that will allow you to limit who can see which accounts and which buckets when they log into the console, among other things. And that's all for the demo. Thanks for your time.